to be honest, that really made me happy. <laughs> uh, good evening. Good evening. Welcome to worship on this uh, Saturday, October 17th, or Sunday, October 18th. Uh, we are joining together here on the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, tonight we have a special service. We will be celebrating a affirmation of baptism of one of our youth. Uh, in a COVID sense. Uh, normally we would have everyone here with all the trumpets, literally trumpets. Uh, this year, no trumpets because of the whole spit foul thing. So uh, as we join together though, please take a moment to gather yourselves in prayer. We'll begin with our brief order of confession and absolution in one moment. I invite you to rise. We begin this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess, confess that we are captive, captive to sin and, and cannot free ourselves. ourselves. We have, we have sinned, sinned against, against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the, the glory, glory of your, your holy name. name. Amen. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We join together this evening with our gathering hymn, God is Here. Uh, we sing verse 1. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you. you. We join together with our Kyrie and our hymn of praise. You'll find these on the pages three and four of the bulletin. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, 
for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Worthy is Christ the Lord. Let us pray. Sovereign God, raise your throne in our hearts. Created by you, let us live in your image. Created for you, let us act for your glory. Redeemed by you, let us give you what is yours. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated. First reading is from the 45th chapter of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have grasped to subdue nations before him and strip kings of their robes, to open doors before him, and the gates shall not be closed. I will go before you and level the mountains. I will break in pieces the doors of bronze and cut through the bars of iron. I will give you the treasures of darkness and riches hidden in secret places, so that you may know that it is I, the Lord, the God of Israel, who call, call, who call you by your name for the sake of my servant Jacob and Israel, my chosen. I call you by your name. I surname you, though you do not know me. I am the Lord, and there is no other. Besides me, there is no God. I arm you, though you do not know me, so that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west, there is no one besides me. I am the Lord, 
and there is no other. I form light and create darkness. I make weal and create woe. I, the Lord, do all these things. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. We will sing Psalm 96 responsibly. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing, Sing to, to the, the Lord. Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord all the earth. Tell it out among the nations, the Lord is King. The one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it let the fields be joyful, and all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming, O Lord. For you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. A reading from 1 Thessalonians, the first chapter. Paul, Salvus, and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians and God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We always give thanks to God for all that you for all of you, and mention you in our prayers constantly, remembering before our God and Father your work of faith and labor of love and steadfastness of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters, beloved by God, that he has chosen you because our message of the gospel came to you, not in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and and with full conviction, just as you know what kind of person we proved to be among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, for in spite of persecution, you received the word of joy inspired by the Holy Spirit, so that you became an example to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. For the word of the Lord has sounded Forth from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has become known, so that we have no need to speak out about it. For people of those regions report 
about us, what kind of welcome we had among you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the wrath that is coming. Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia. Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, o Lord. Lord. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap Jesus in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth and show deference to no one, for you do not regard equal people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this? And they brought, they answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Good evening, or good morning to you all. We uh, come together tonight, and we are at the end of the, well, in the middle of the harvest season, and our uh, our readings are going to start focusing on that sort of theme where uh, it's all about kind of gathering things in and preparing. This is sort of the end of our liturgical year. And today we find Jesus being confronted by leaders of the synagogue, the leaders of the Jerusalem synagogue, the Pharisees. And their entire purpose in this scene is to try to catch Jesus on a, on a legal technicality. You know your argument's not going well when you try to catch people up on legal technicality, if that's the best you can come up with. So uh, they ask Jesus about paying taxes and whether he should or not taxes. Uh, the coins being themselves, you know, they're dirty and they represent something foreign. And so Jesus says, hey, can I have one of your coins? And they pull out a denarius, just so you have a picture in your mind. A denarius is roughly the size of a quarter made of silver. It was roughly the, about, think of it like a $50 bill. You know, it was a substantial amount, but it wasn't going to, uh, if you dropped it, you would remember. It's not like a penny where you could just keep going. Like, it was enough that people would notice it. Um, so on that coin, think about the size of a quarter, was a picture of the emperor, the emperor Tiberius. And if you were to read it, it said on there, Tiberius Caesar, son of the god Augustus. And on the back, it said, high priest. It says in Latin, but uh, the point, though, is that this is the son of God, and if you want to access this God, you have to go through Tiberius. Tiberius is making all sorts of claims, both theological and, and uh, religious and uh, political about this. this. This coin that everybody just keeps in their pocket uh, makes this claim that their ruler is the son of a god. And Jesus realizes that that's what they're trying to entrap him in. And to be honest, Tiberius is about as close to as all-powerful as a person could be. Uh, he had all the power in the world. Uh, it's, it's Tiberius who appoints Pontius Pilate, who will have the power to kill Jesus in a couple years. But Jesus knows that the emperor in Rome is, well, doesn't have actual power. Tiberius is going to die in 37 AD, and he'll be replaced by his uh, stepson, a guy named Caligula. Terrible guy. Uh, but he would also take that same title, son of God. To take these kind of rascals and to declare them to be a god, and to even compare them to our god, the actual god, 
the God who created the universe, it's frankly absurd. It's not even worth talking about. Throughout the whole Bible, we get these sort of reminders that kings and things like that, kings and horses is my favorite sort of picture of this. They don't have any actual power. They can't create from nothing. They don't offer hope. At the heart of all of these sort of uh, talks sometimes, it almost seems like Jesus is always bringing up money. And they are, people bring it up, I think uh, 11 of his uh, parables are actually about money, and then about the other half are basically about property and ownership and sort of the rights about owning things. So it all kind of comes back to the same sort of principle of owning property and money. And money is a fascinating thing. Uh, some of you might know that the reason I am a pastor is because I worked at a bank for five years. Part of my call process was uh, helping people and doing lending, but also watching people as they encountered and sort of dealt with their relationships with money. People would come in with their paychecks and they would cash the whole thing. Maybe it was for 20 hours or 40 or 70. And when they would hand over their check, it would seem that they were literally handing over this portion of their life. I know that sounds extreme, but if you think about it, it wasn't. They'd exchanged 20, 40, 70 hours of their life, and the only thing they have to show for it is this piece of paper and these coins that they get out of those things that you now put in your pocket. They represent your life. And if you were to approach money with that sort of power, if you look at that as owning 40 hours of your week, it's absolutely going to have this power. The call that Jesus has for us, and the call that we are to hear from this, is that money is just a tool. We're being called to reorient our views, that uh, you can write your name all over money, but it doesn't mean that you actually have any power. You can invest your money and you can get something out of it. Investing is actually part of what we do with the things that we have. Investing is not a bad thing. The entire premise of agriculture, a primary image throughout the Bible, is premised on the idea that you put something in the ground and wait for it to bear fruit later. Uh, you plant something looking ahead to the future, and yeah, you could eat all of your seeds right now, but it's probably a good idea if you don't. But when you start looking at those seeds as having the power of life and death, as if they were this life-giving God, we're not going to get much out of it. Our call is to say those are merely seeds and to become followers of Christ because mammon is not really a God. And when we start thinking of that as a God, well, it's like trying to fit a camel through an eye or a needle. It's just not going to work. Um, so Jesus' parable is about these money. It's it's interesting. Why do you think he talked about money so often? Well, I think I read somewhere recently that the money or property is mentioned 800 times in the Bible. That's pretty close to the most talked about topic. Why do you think for the last 4,000 years we've been talking about this? Well, it makes sense because it was part of their life then as it is now. 2,000 years later from Jesus, we are still being wooed away and tempted by it. A lot of that points to the... Uh, that people have been for all time putting their faith into something that isn't God. And I love in the psalm today, it has this great line. Uh, it says, as for you, the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O oh Lord, have made the heavens. That word idols, you know, I kind of think of uh, like a tiki doll or something that's just not, you know, actually, it's a piece of wood or uh, a stone altar or something. But the word in Hebrew also just means nothing. It means like a wisp, like just literal. All those gods of the nations, they are nothing but, well, the empty, empty air. They have no existence. You can have all you want, but none of them actually have any power. You can put all the gold and silver you want on all the pieces of it, but you know what? Something created those things. Something called that matter into being from the universe. And you can praise your idols all you want, but... The universe itself is praising that which created it. Putting our hope into things, uh, we had a good example of kind of how things fall apart a couple weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago at this point. We had that derecho that came to Iowa. Here in Dubuque, we didn't really get hit by it as much as the friends down in uh, Cedar Rapids did. They got really hit. But that night, we had a church meeting, and worst thing ever, people's cell phones didn't work. Not just that, but their internet didn't work. 
and we couldn't do Zoom conferences, and no one knew who was going to be there or not. I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but it shows you we have this little litmus of things that when, when we put our hope into something, when it falls apart, it can fall apart pretty quickly. And I'm not a Luddite. I think God's given us this whole ability to use technology for a reason. I think God's blessed us with that. But the, the focus, though, is that those things that we use are not God. But it, it's it, how many of us expected, well, when we plan ahead, things like, who here expected Jonah to be being confirmed on a day when there's only a few people at church? That your uh, godparents are not here. We're wearing masks. We can plan all we want. Uh, but I think it's appropriate, though, that we are here today and honoring you. That we are honoring this sort of commitment, this trusting in something bigger. So, I don't know if you know this, but according to the United States Department of Agriculture, the total cost of raising a child born in, well, the last statistic was 2015, the total cost for a family is $233,610. $230,000 is what you have to put into a kid just to raise it through the age of 18. That is a terrible investment, by the way. And it's not just, that's just the financial. I mean, how, many, how much time has Isabel had to put in dealing with you? Or how much time has your teachers and your students and your friends all have to put into you? And I don't think any of them are expecting to be able to submit a bill to you later and have you write a check saying, oh, well, your return on investment for being my parents was $412,000 this year. At the same time, when your parents took on this task and your godparents made promises on your behalf, they didn't really say, well, according to the, you know, I, mean, I understand the risks based on uh, the United States Department of Agriculture. No, they looked past those risks too. They looked past the official rules and details of what it was. We spend all that time trying to teach this every single week, the good news of Jesus' love. That's the point of this. We're praying that those promises that were shared with you uh, when you were a child and we shared with you through confirmation will continue to share with you for the rest of your life and that you'll hear it, that that cross that's on your forehead is still going to be there next week. And that the payoff for us as members of the church is not going to be in dollars or denarius. It's going to be in that love. And I feel today we're going to see some of the fruits that have been born. But it's not just for his family today that we watch this. We all celebrate this. We all celebrate this reminder of what God's grace is, that that grace is free, that it will fill us, that our debts have been paid and our sins are forgiven. As part of this theme over the next few weeks, we're going to have uh, sort of this harvest mentality, this whole imagery of, of stewardship, and that's the fancy word of saying uh, we need you to help financially give to the church. And asking about people to come and invest in this ministry to help foster its growth and look ahead to a future that we can continue to share this word with the world. Because the heart of it is giving that, giving that which God gives to us and then we share that. We're being challenged by Jesus today to look past a calling where money and possessions have any power, but in fact, they are gifts flowing from God. Each week, well, during the normal church season, we have an offering before uh, communion. We ask people to actually give to the ministries of the church, to give financially, to volunteer your time. Today we did a, a food gathering today. People gave their time. They were here at, before 8 a.m. on a Saturday. That's remarkable to me, <laughs> to give food out. And the church uses all these gifts. And we, we do it through hard times and good times. And we, we pray that you will continue to join with us in sharing this ministry so that we can raise up young leaders. So we can, we can take this gospel to the world, to our neighbors, so we can keep the lights on also in the sanctuary. But what we ask for them, what we ask for your partnership in this, has nothing to do with guilt or obligation. We do this because we have a freedom in Christ. Friends, you are loved. All of you have been loved. And that love is shown for you every single week. That love that's marked upon your forehead in that cross. The cross of Jesus Christ who redeemed you and returns to you each and every day.
invite you to rise as we sing together our hymn of the day. Lift every voice and sing. We sing verse 1. you to be seated. Uh, I didn't realize how convenient wearing a mask was for hiding whether you're singing or not. That's kind of neat. I could just look like I'm doing it the whole time, but uh, I am singing. I really am. Uh, this time uh, we celebrate the milestone affirmation of baptism with one of our ninth graders. Joan, I invite you to stand. Come up and stand right here. I present Jonah Timothy Markham, who desires to make public affirmation of his baptism. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for Jonah, whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called him to yourself, enlightened him with the gifts of your spirit, and nourished him in the community of faith. Uphold him in the gifts and promises of baptism and unite him with all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen. Jonah, we now ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Members of the congregation, we ask you to rise and join with Jonah as well at this time. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? If so, please respond, I renounce them. I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? If so, please respond, I renounce them. I, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, please respond, I renounce them. I renounce, I renounce, renounce them. them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe, I believe in God the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, our Lord. Lord. Who was, who was conceived, conceived by the Holy Spirit, Spirit born of the Virgin Mary, Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate, Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended, he descended into hell. On, On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe, I believe in, the in the Holy Spirit, Spirit the Holy Catholic, Catholic Church. Church the, the communion, communion of the saints, saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the Amen. I invite the congregation to be seated. Jonah, you have made public profession of your faith. We now ask, do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. If so, please answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to continue to support Jonah? and pray for him in his life in Christ? If so, please answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. 
We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. All right, Joan, I invite you to come forward and kneel. And the family. Family and sponsors uh, who will be here virtually tomorrow. I'm asking you, wherever you are in the world, just please be here. Thank you. Uh, and we place the stole on him. As a sign as the, of a pro profession of your faith, as a way to symbolize your commitment to serve God and neighbor by taking on the yoke of Christ, we place on you the stole that you have made, Jonah. At this time, I invite you all to place your hand on Jonah. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Jonah the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in serving, give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life. work, my friend. All right, you should probably turn so people can clap for you. Let's, let's, let's all clap. Let's welcome Jonah. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Jonah. You did a nice job, and uh, we, continue to, we look forward to continuing with you as a full member of the congregation, and we pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give us new birth, cleanse us from sin, and raise us to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Do it again. Let's welcome him again. Oh, welcome him again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Might as well. <laughs> I invite you to be seated. And as we continue, thank you very much, Jonah. Uh, we continue with our prayers of intercession. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church the world, and all those in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. We give thanks for the witness of your servants like Luke, the evangelist, whom the church commemorates today. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Rise up, devout stewards of all that you have made. Here. Great. God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Watch over our students, their educators, and all those blessed with their daily care. We pray especially for those at Hoover Elementary School, St. Anthony, Our Lady of Guadalupe School, and Cascade Junior and Senior High. We also lift up those prayers aloud and on our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy great. great. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justice, justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Living God, as you raised Jesus from the dead, so you rise up those who have died in you. We give you thanks for their witness. Confident of your, 
confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also, and also with, with you. you. At this time, I invite you to turn and uh, share signs of Christ's peace with those around you and, and also to extend a thank you to all uh, of you who are indeed helping us Jesus. with our financial uh, financially during this pandemic. Uh, we look forward to well seeing you all again here soon. <laughs> if you're able. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. You have set before us these gifts of your good creation. Prepare, prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink, and send us forth to set the table in the midst of the suffering world through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to, to give, give our thanks and, and praise. praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy. in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. He gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our, our daily bread, bread. And forgive, forgive us, us our sins, as, as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the, and and the glory, glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Friends, taste and see that the Lord is good. This is Christ's table, and all are welcome here. Friends, I invite you to open your your uh, communion kits. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. I'm 
We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger. Guided by the guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, looking ahead to now our fall season, uh, we had a wonderful, just want to give you a bit of a rundown. We had that food pantry come this morning. It was a uh, very, it was a success. I think we did, well, we made a good impression to our neighbors and friends, and I'd like to see that happen again as we handed out uh, food to uh, those in our community. Uh, an opportunity to continue to uh, partner with our local community is giving to Gwen's Pantry. That is our uh, little food pantry, but we're specifically asking for uh, people to help stock the shelves. We're collecting um, uh, not food for it, but we're collecting, I'm blanking on the word. Toiletries. Toiletries is the word I'm looking for. So uh, to help offset people's uh, budgets on that, if you want to help, uh, we'll have signups for that available. And uh, Trunk or Treat is officially a go in uh, the city council said. So uh, we'll have uh, some more information about that for you in your news inserts or email. It'll be Friday, October 30th at 5.30 p.m. Masks, because that's part of the fun of Halloween. It just builds for, I mean, it's perfect, right? Isn't, no. Anyway, uh, and also, script available tomorrow. We have a church service on Sunday is what I mean. If you'd like to join us for a Bible study, we're meeting at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesdays. We're reading the book of Galatians. If you've never read it, it's a good opportunity. There's no study ahead of time or required. Just join on. Uh, love to see you there. Uh, I'll also have pickup of Sunday school for next Sunday. Yep, say, next that loud, say that louder. The next pickup for Sunday school will be next Sunday, 10.15 till noon. So pick up your next packet. Such fun. All right, I invite you to receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Before we sing, I'd like, Jonah, can you stand up one more time? Just because I get to ask you to do that. Uh, and everybody clap for him one more time. <laughs> Good work, young man. Uh, and in that honor, I invite you all to rise as we sing our sending hymn this evening, morning, You Servants of God, uh, written by Joseph Michael Haydn. That's fun. Verses 1 and 4. Remember the poor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.